Hello. Uh, today we're going to learn how to use the BitMessage program. Uh, essentially, what BitMessage is, uh, it could be described as what would happen if you took email and Bitcoin and smashed them together. Uh, it's like Bitcoin in the sense that every message you send over this program uh, is received by every user running the program. There's essentially a public blockchain like Bitcoin. Um, the way the messages are kept secure and private, though, is uh, when you create an identity, uh, the actual identity itself is your public encryption key. So each message gets encrypted with that, and only you as the owner of that account are capable of decrypting it. So you receive every single message, try to decrypt each one, and the ones you can decrypt belong to you. That is basically how the program maintains your anonymity. Is If everyone's receiving every single message, it's impossible to know which ones actually belong to you and which ones do not. Uh, so there's no real way for any kind of law enforcement or uh, uh, corrupt government officials to prove that this is something that you intended to receive. That said, it's a very easy program to use. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but once you download the program, uh, just save it onto a folder on your computer. And uh, you open it up. It doesn't require anything to install. Uh, I personally keep mine uh, on a flash drive. That way I can take it anywhere I want to go. Uh, but if, and if you want to use a flash drive, uh, what you're going to want to do is go into the settings and uh, make sure you have this run in portable mode checked. Uh, if you have that checked, all of your identities and messages will be saved on the same folder as the program itself. Uh, otherwise, it gets stored in your uh, public folder, and it can take a very long time to actually retrieve that and back everything up. So, so Once we get in here, though, uh, you're going to want to go to Your Identities, and uh, we're going to create an identity just by clicking New, and you're given two options. Uh, one is to use a random number generator. The advantage of this is that uh, nobody's really going to uh, be able to steal that unless you, they access a backup of it. Uh, on the other hand, using a passphrase, uh, you can actually recreate your account from any computer you have access to just by using the same password. Uh, the downside of that is if you use a very simple password, uh, it is possible for other people to gain access to it just simply by either accidentally or intentionally using the exact same passwords. Uh, so if you're going to do that, be sure to use the one that is complicated enough that you don't think anyone else is going to be using it, but simple enough that you can remember it if you ever need to. So I'm going to create a set of eight addresses uh, using a passphrase. And uh, I have done this uh, quite a few times uh, for this video. And I can say with certainty that every single time it produces the same eight addresses. So uh, first thing we're going to do is double click on one of the labels and call that the uh, Crypto Scriptorium. Just uh, make that a little easier to distinguish one of them. And then for the next one, we are going to go to Special Address Behavior. Uh, we right-click on it and have it behave as a pseudo mailing list. So, so uh, normal addresses uh, basically behave like an email address. You would give somebody this entire address here by just right-clicking and copying to clipboard. Then you can send it to them however you'd like. Uh, mailing addresses, on the other hand, every message that's received by a mailing address automatically gets sent out to anyone who is subscribed to that mailing address. And actually, if somebody, if you want to have somebody subscribe to it, you would right-click on it, get the address for it, give it to them, and they would go into subscriptions and click on add a new subscription. And and apparently I left one in there from a previous take. 
and then we're just going to remove that. There we go. That we are now subscribed to that. And um, let's see, we're going to send a message from Crypto Scriptorium to that uh, to that mailing address. See what happens. Send that. Yes, to mailing address. Mailing list. So we are going to send that. And uh, when you send a message, the work gets queued. Uh, it can take several minutes depending on how much uh, data you're currently trying to process. Uh, once it does, it'll change to doing the necessary work uh, where it'll encrypt the message, uh, do a proof of work. Uh, the proof of work is basically a certain amount of uh, computing power that has to be used. Uh, that's basically a fail-safe to both prove that this is coming from a legitimate source and to deter anyone from uh, trying to spam BitMessage to slow down the network. Uh, there was recently a, well, it was uh, about a year ago, I suppose, a uh, user who, using the blockchain, got every single publicly known address for uh, BitMessage and uh, sent a message to every single user on there. Uh, it was about 15,000 different users. Uh, each message was set to, uh, you know, there's the message said something along the lines of there's been a security flaw in BitMessage. Click on this link to see more information. Each link was a different uh, address and it was an attempt for a uh, security professional to attach IP addresses to BitMessage addresses. Uh, he got about 500 users addresses supposedly but um, Point being is that 15,000 messages uh, took him by hand about three and a half hours to queue up in the program, and it took BitMessage about 20 hours to actually get the last one sent out. So it is not exactly the fastest working program uh, in existence for that reason to prevent spam and any uh, malicious attempts. But that said, if at any point you do receive a unsolicited message uh, asking you to click links, do exactly what you would do if you'd received an unsolicited email message asking you to click a link and don't click it. Now the message just got sent. Uh, it did, and there we go, it did show up in our, in our uh, inbox. And let's see, is it going to broadcast that out? Uh, that may take it some more time, but that is in essence how you uh, send and receive messages. And another interesting aspect of, uh, of BitMessage is what it are called chans, which in the case of chans, uh, they are essentially... Uh, public mailing lists that allow anyone with access to the mailing list the ability to post to and on behalf of the mailing list. So it's basically kind of a public identity. So under file, if you go to join or create chan, uh, we're going to create one. And it takes it a minute, but go in there and we go to your identities and as you see the Chan names actually show up in gold uh, if you are somebody were to request that you join a Chan or gives you the address for one uh, you would actually just go file join Chan and uh, the name would be what appears here after Chan Cryptoscriptorium and the address would be this that appears in gold uh, that's the information you give to them, or that you would want to get from them. And uh, that's that would give you access to both uh, the messages received by the Chan, and uh, allow you to send messages on behalf of it. 
um, a, so there's a consent from the chain itself. And from an ordinary address, you can actually, if anyone is subscribed to the address through the subscriptions tab, you can actually send a general purpose message to anyone with that subscription. Uh, it should be noted that uh, broadcast messages are not encrypted. And so if you are sharing personal information, that is not the way to do it. Let's see. Uh, address book, blacklist, and uh, this gives you general information about how long you've been connected, uh, how many messages you've decrypted, things like that. And let's see. And uh, in the event that you were to generate your identity using a passphrase, uh, if you wanted to restore one uh, after going to a different computer, you would go to File, Regenerate, and you can actually use the same passphrase, determine how many you actually did at the time, and what the address version number was. Uh, that will make absolutely certain that you will be able to restore them. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, if there's something I forgot to include in this tutorial, please let me know. Um, but from here, you can actually send and receive any messages that you need to. Uh, so you have a great day. Thank you.